Hey, everybody. Dave Archer here, Atlanta Falcon Radio Network. And we've been breaking down what I think are the top 20 players in the draft. Not how they're going to go in the draft, but the top 20 players overall. So we've already seen 11 to 20. You can see those on AtlantaFalcons.com. But we're going to look now at 6 through 10. Let's start at number 10. Caleb Farley, the defensive back out of Virginia Tech, 6'2", 207 pounds, ran 4'3", 5 at his pro day. Now, this is a kid that opted out last year, so limited amount of film on Caleb Farley. But what you see, you love. Smooth transitions, athletic kid, played high school quarterback. In fact, accounted for 58 touchdowns as a high school quarterback his senior year. Uh, has outstanding athleticism, which that would indicate. So now, when you look at this kid, he was targeted 45 times in 2019. His last playing, you remember, opted out in 2020. So 2019, 45 times he was targeted, only 12 completions. He knocked down 10 passes and intercepted four. So this kid's got outstanding ball skills. Now, what are some of the problems in experience? Okay, only 58 snaps of press coverage that you see on tape, only 24 games of total playtime as a Virginia Tech Hokie. And oh, by the way, he had back surgery on March 23rd. Now, NFL doctors said, He'll be fine for training camp, but that's still going to be a red flag that sticks up in the air about Caleb Farley. But I love the athlete. Got great size, the corner spot. I could see him in an Atlanta Falcon uniform opposite A.J. Terrell at the corner spot. Caleb Farley checks in at number 10 on the value list. Let's go to number nine. Number nine on our value list is Rashawn Slater, the outstanding offensive tackle from Northwestern. Now, We're going to have to find out whether he'll transition to the inside. But what Slater did in his career at Northwestern is he played both tackle positions. And he started as a freshman. This is a kid that played on both sides of the ball as a freshman. He was uh, he's a guy that's got great versatility and athleticism. He does a good job of getting up to that second level. And that's what you always look for in guys on the offensive line in the run game. Can they get to the second level? It's nice to be able to get that initial guy blocked, but can you transition to that next level? And his athleticism is going to allow him to do some of that. Now, he's a bit undersized to play tackle in the National Football League. He's 6'4", 315 pounds. And then the arm length comes in. We we see a lot of, uh, of the measurables when it comes to offensive tackles. How long are those arms? Can they lock out those edge rushers? He's got 33-inch arms, which has a tendency to be a problem. I could see this guy, Rashawn Slater, wearing a Falcon helmet next year if the Falcons were to trade back into that 8, 9, 10 area, and he would be a guy that would fit nicely next to Jake Matthews at that left guard position. So that's the number nine on our value board. Let's transition to now number eight for me, Patrick Sertan, cornerback, Alabama. Six foot two, 202 pounds, ran 4.42 at his pro day. So he has the speed and he has top end speed too. There's some questions as to whether the receivers can run by Patrick Sertan. I've seen, based on the tape, I've seen his, his skill set and then his ability to run. And he proved that in his pro day with a 4.42 straight on, he can run. Now, his size, speed, they fit everything in the National Football League. Big receivers. This is a kid that likes to come up and play press coverage. Now, he's not overly physical at the line of scrimmage, but his football IQ is tremendous. And why not? His dad, Patrick Sertain, played corner as well. So here's another one of these dads. Remember, we talked about J.C. Horn and his dad playing in the National Football League. The transition from college ball or high school ball, college ball to pro ball, his dad's there to help him out. And Patrick Tertain is one of those guys that has that help of his father. His father was an outstanding player. Now, this kid, his ball skills are outstanding. His ability to find the football. I think that this might be the best guy when it comes to finding the football when it's in the air in press coverage. Patrick Sertain is that number eight pick on my value board. Let's go to number seven. Number seven is the number two quarterback in this draft, in my opinion. Remember, this is my list, so this is my opinion. Justin Fields checks in, the local kid out of Harrison High School, Kennesaw, Georgia. Fields got a chance to see him play some in high school. Obviously, we saw him play a little bit at Georgia, but then he makes his transition to Ohio State. The 6'3", 228-pounder was outstanding. Now, when you look at Justin Fields, the athleticism oozes from this kid. He fits perfectly in what Atlanta wants to do, stretch running game, come off of that bootlegs, play action. He did all of that stuff. He is not scheme specific and certainly was not hamstrung when he went to Ohio State. He did a number of things. Now, limited play time now. And again, this is what happens with these quarterbacks when you start to evaluate them. 
is how much experience do they have? A number of these guys don't have the experience, say, a Trevor Lawrence has. But this kid, when he did get on the field, played extremely high level. 22 games, just 22 games. But when he did play, he stood out. What stood out about him is the athleticism, as I talked about. How about his toughness? Did anybody watch the Clemson game? How about the Clemson game where he gets hit in the middle of the back, comes back in and guides his team to a huge win. In fact, made some monster throws in the game against Clemson in the semifinal game to guide them in to the national championship for an opportunity to win it all. Justin Fields is a kid. The toughness is what I like about it. I love a kid that's going to that's gonna suck it up, get hit, be able to play. You know he's not going to miss some time. That's what we love about Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan is a guy that has missed three games in his 13-year career. I see a similar guy like that in Justin Fields. You need your leader on the football field, and he is all of that. Justin Fields checks in at number seven on the value board. And number six. Devontae Smith, wide receiver, Alabama, 6'1", 170 pounder. He possesses all the necessary quickness and speed. Just throw on the tape. The kid can do it all. They ran him in motion. They reversed him motion. They got him in the flat. He can run vertical. He can run across the field. He had all the ability. And when you talk about uh, speed and quickness, the thing that jumps out when you want is, is short area quickness. Do you have short area quickness? This kid has that. When you, when you throw a quick screen to him, can he make somebody miss and then make a big play? We've seen Julio Jones do it. We've seen Calvin Ridley do it. This kid, ironically enough, both Alabama guys. And, oh, yeah, here comes another Alabama guy off of the board. The thing you get concerned about with Devontae Smith, and, again, you always, you're always you going to talk about all the superlatives and how good they are, but there's always going to be a check mark or two you kind of wonder about. Not very big. 6'1", 170 pounds. We just talked about a couple of corners that are 6'2", 205, 210 pounds. There's obviously a 30-pound differential between those two, and those two are pounding on each other most of the game. So that's the only drawback you have on Devontae Smith. The Devontae Smith has great hands. He has anticipation. He understands coverage. All the things he learned from Steve Sarkeesian at, uh, at Alabama, he did all those things. And remember, this is a kid that was doing it from the time he was a freshman. This is the kid that caught the, the touchdown pass from Tua Tungvaloa to beat George in the national championship game. And over time, he was a freshman. Here we go, fast forward all the way to his senior year. He's a Heisman Trophy winner, and he's about to become a National Football League star at the wide receiver position. So there you have it, six through 10 on the value board, my value board, who I think are going to be some of the best players available in the draft. 